is Aaron Blade, and I'm the editor, creator, and producer of what you're watching right now, Blade Talk. If you are new here, welcome, and you found this presentation helpful and informative, do me a huge favor and hit that like button, do me an even greater favor and subscribe to my channel, always appreciate all the support that I am given. So, you know what time it is, that question and answer session where you get to ask me five questions and I answer to the best of my ability. So, if you're interested, let's hit that intro and let's begin. So first and foremost, my prayers go out to Israel. The Houthis fired uh, rockets into central Israel from Yemen, and they're warning that more strikes are coming. And I just want to ask for your prayers um, and keep Israel in your thoughts as they battle the Hamas on one front, the Hezbollah on another front near Lebanon. And now the Houthis from Yemen. So please keep Israel in your thoughts and prayers. That being said, let's jump into the first question. First question. Hey, Blade. Why are Jews so successful? Um, so it's not that Jews are more intelligent than other people. I want to debunk that right off the bat okay it's just that jewish culture strongly encourages its young to pursue higher education over virtually any other option right most jews are aware of their religious and cultural history it includes expulsions and exiles all you own can be taken from you your business could be the target of a boycott, and you could be the object of violence. Even today, there is an upsurge in anti-Semitic violence in Europe, as well as in America. The one thing that cannot be taken away from you is your education. It can't be taxed by the government or stolen by mobs. When you're denied the opportunity to pack your possessions, you can still take your education wherever you go. This is something that Jews learn um, early as a child, and that is why most Jewish parents, myself included, encourage their children to learn and then learn some more. And from my personal standpoint, when I would have... Um, observe Shabbat with my grandparents there wasn't you know much electricity or technology in, in use so all you had to have fun was board games sleep and books and my grandmother had an entire library just like every Jewish family I ever went to had they always have stacks and stacks of books and you just learn. Hope that answers the question. Next question. If Noah had an ark, why did the dinosaurs not make it to the ark? Or is it possible that they all died in the flood? So the short answer is no, because dinosaurs were already extinct long before Noah built the ark. The long answer is that the fact of the matter is before 1824, dinosaurs were unknown to mankind. So um, several in that year, several kinds of fossilized reptiles were unearthed in England. Since then, dinosaurs fossils have been found on every continent. The fossil record indicates there was an extraordinary and variety of dinosaur types at the time of Earth's history called the Age of Dinosaurs. Remains have been found in the 
great central plain of North America. The prairies of central Alberta, Canada have yielded over 500 complete skeletons. 1920s dinosaur bones in Gobi Desert of Central Asia, 1940s in Mongolia, a skeleton 40 feet long. 1986 fossils of plant-eating dinosaurs in Antarctica, just before that dinosaur bones found on uh, the north slope of Alaska. In the last hundred years, dinosaur bones have been uncovered in so many places, it has become apparent the dinosaurs were widespread in the remote past. The earth had a tropical climate at the time. Fossils of tropical plants are abundant like those in Antarctica, so the vast array of dinosaurs with their huge appetites would have been appropriate considering the abundance of vegetation worldwide. When the dinosaurs had fulfilled their purpose, God ended their life and the Torah doesn't say how or when. Just as suddenly as they appeared, they disappeared. Humans and dinosaurs never made contact as they were, were essentially not compatible. One type of dinosaur stood 40 feet tall. The wingspan of the flying reptile was 50 feet. Human fossils constantly appear above layers containing dinosaur, dinosaur fossils. The book Paleontology by James Scott states even the earliest specimens of homo, homo sapiens, man, lived long after the disappearance of the dinosaurs. It follows that the great dinosaur reptiles belong to an earlier age than the human remains. There are no, no dinosaur bones in any of the higher layers. Most scientists conclude the age of the dinosaurs ended before humans ever came on the scene. Hope that answers the question. Number three, how did Nazis in World War II identify Jews? What did they resort to if they were just suspicious of someone being a Jew? So, during World War II, the Nazis used various methods to identify Jews and other targeted groups. It wasn't just Jews, it was the disabled, um, it was black people, it was Asians, um, and they used various methods. Um, some of them included registration. Jews were often required to register with the authorities who kept records of individuals' religious affiliations. This made it easier for the Nazis to identify Jews in the population. Another way was identification cards. Jews were often required to carry identification cards that identified them as Jewish. These cards could be checked by authorities at any time. Another was physical appearance. In some cases, the Nazis relied on uh, physical characteristics such as facial features or other traits that they associated with Jewish ancestry. However, this method was not always reliable as not all Jews fit the stereotypes the Nazis were looking for. So it was a rough time because even if you looked Jewish, you were considered Jewish at the time. Um, another way was family background. The Nazis also looked into the family backgrounds of individuals to determine if they had Jewish ancestry. They often trace family trees and genealogical records to establish someone's Jewish heritage. If the Nazis were suspicious of someone being Jewish, Jewish but did not have concrete proof, they might resort to various tactics to investigate further. Uh, some of these include interrogation. Individuals suspected of being Jewish might be interrogated by the authorities to gather more information about their background, family, and religious beliefs. Informants. 
Uh, the Nazis encouraged people to inform on their neighbors and others in their communities. If someone was suspected of being Jewish, informants might provide information to the authorities to confirm their suspicions. They also raided homes. Um, the Nazis often conducted raids on homes and businesses to search for hidden Jews or Jewish belongings. If someone was suspected of being Jewish, their home might be uh, essentially searched for evidence. There was also um, forced confessions. Uh, in some cases, individuals suspected of being Jewish were subjected to torture or other forms of coercion to force them to confess to their Jewish identity. Overall, the methods used by the Nazis to identify Jews were often arbitrary, discriminatory, um, and based on racist ideologies. Hope that answers the question. Number four, when a Gentile converts to Judaism, who decides which of the 12 tribes he or she will belong to? So a little bit of biblical history here. Um, Jacob, a.k.a. Israel, had 12 sons and each was a progenitor of a tribe. The tribe of Levi had a special purpose to be the priest and the temple and the helpers they called themselves levites so to maintain 12 landed tribes joseph the tribe of joseph was split into two um, named for his sons or after his sons uh, manasha and ephraim however after the death of king solomon the ten northern tribes seceded under the general Jeroboam, and they called their kingdom Israel. The two tribes that were left, Judah and Benjamin, were the kingdom of Judah. This is because compared to Judah, Benjamin was small and pretty much irrelevant. About 722 BCE, the northern kingdom was conquered, never to be seen again, hence the ten lost tribes. Around 586 BCE, Judah was conquered, and most of its inhabitants exiled to Babylonia. Around 70 years later, the Persians conquered the Babylonians and allowed the Jews to return. Since Benjamin was so irrelevant by then they were pretty much lumped into the tribe of judah so other than levy all were essentially uh, from the tribe of judah it is from there that we get the words describing jews such as judaism judaic uh, jew etc etc so to make a long story short unless you are a levite or a kohen basically a priest by the direct male line, you are essentially in the tribe of Judah. A convert would not be Jewish by direct male line, so if you want to assign him a tribe, it's essentially totally meaningless now. It would be Judah. Tribe affiliation is irrelevant now because we don't have a temple, um, there's no one, and very few people even know what tribe they belong to. So it all pretty much gets lumped into the tribe of Judah. Hope that answers the question. Last one. How hard is it to keep Shabbat? So I've always stated that we shouldn't be more strict than Chazal. Ultimately, it depends. There are 39 categories of prohibited labor with subcategories. To be honest, it really isn't that hard. Some just make it harder nowadays. There are extra restrictions that people have created. The big thing is that even if you screw up, it's no big deal. Just try again next week. You aren't liable for breaking Shabbat if you make mistakes. You're only liable when you do things intentionally. So... The big thing is, is there is no such thing as a Shabbat police or anything like that. Do the best you can. Okay. Um, it's not designed to be hard. It's designed to 
separate yourself, set aside yourself for something holy, something meaningful, i.e. God, your family, your Jewish community. Some people have gone above and beyond and made it more strict than what it originally was simply because they want they have this idea that the more primitive the more religious which i honestly reject so people want to restrict you from you know cutting your fingernails using electricity using an umbrella if it's raining outside you know they they a lot of people put meaningless restrictions on Shabbat, but in all honestly, honesty, it's not that hard to keep. And again, if you mess up, let's do it again and try again ne next week. You know, do better next week. Hope that answers the question. Thank you all so much for tuning in to Blade Talk. If you found this presentation helpful, informative, do me a huge favor and hit that like button. Do me an even greater favor and subscribe to my channel. I always appreciate all the support that I'm given. Thank you all so much for your support and asking me questions. Be good to yourselves. Be good to others. And until next Sunday, Shavuot Tov. Y'all take care.